Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna cover transformations using object properties. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, be sure to start a new file. So go up to your file menu option and pick new general. You don't need to save what you are working on unless you wanna come back to it later. So I'll click don't save. And in the new file, as usual, you'll have your default cube. Now in this lesson, I wanna begin by talking about the object properties panel or the object properties editor. So, so far in these lessons, we've been focused on the 3D viewport, which is this big area here. But now we wanna move over to the properties panel over here towards the bottom right. Now, we're not gonna worry about everything in this panel just yet, but if you hover over these little icons for a moment and you keep going down, you'll see render properties, output properties, and so on. And you can see what each of these items is. We wanna make sure that we're on this orange square that when you hover over it, it says object properties. It should already be defaulted there, but if it isn't, that's okay, just click on that. And then over here, you will have a menu of options. And I think the transform menu should be opened up for you, but if it's collapsed, if I click on it here, it's collapsed, go ahead and click on transform to open that. So all we're worried about right now is just this one sub element of this whole menu. There's so much more here and we will cover it step-by-step step throughout the lessons, but right now we only need to worry about this transform area here. So we can transform this cube just by using these different menu items here. And if you remember from previous lessons, we had the adjust last operation panel that would show up in the bottom left right after we did a transformation, like for example, moving the cube, and we would be able to edit some of those properties here, but you can always come back and edit the properties here as well. And this can help you be really accurate. So let's say that you know that your location on the X, Y, Z axis needs to be some number of metric units, or again, if you deal in Imperial units, we'll talk about how to switch to those later in a future lesson. But you can go ahead and just click right on this and type one and press enter. It'll default to meters. And if you orbit over here, you've moved the cube one meter over. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Now, these grid squares by default are set up to be one meter by one meter. And again, in a future lesson, we'll talk about how to customize the grid in case you need to see it in smaller or larger increments. You could also decide to rotate something by a precise amount. So go ahead and click on the X rotation and type 45 and press enter for 45 degrees. Let's say that you also wanted to rotate this 45 degrees on the Y. So go ahead and click on that zero there. It'll highlight it, type 45 and press enter and it'll default to 45 degrees there. Now you can orbit around and you see how that's looking. Lastly, let's just change the scale in the Z direction. So go ahead and click on that. And let's say this needs to be two times bigger along the Z direction. So go ahead and type two and press enter. So two here is not meters, it's a multiplier. So whatever the size of the cube was, it's now two times bigger in the Z direction. And notice the Z direction is for this object. So you notice that it didn't grow up and down in the direction that the Z is for this whole entire file here. It grew along this direction here, or what is the Z direction for the object? We'll get into things about world versus local coordinates and understanding the difference between how an object thinks about its X, Y, and Z versus the entire world or the entire 3D viewport thinks about it. We'll cover all of that stuff in a future lesson, but just important to note 
that you are already seeing some differences there and what you might have expected to see. So the object properties panel here, the transform menu is good for making changes. It's also good for just seeing what's going on. So if we had been using the regular move, scale, and rotate tools, and then we wondered where, where are things? What are the size and shape of things? We can come over to this panel and see what we've done. Another place to see the same information, with this object selected, press N on your keyboard. That's a shortcut to bring up this same panel over here on the side of your screen and you might say, well, then why would I need this? But there's this one extra piece of information that shows up here, and that's the dimensions. So now you see that this is two meters by two meters by four meters. So the default cube starts out as two meters by two meters by two meters, but the Z has been scaled up times two, so that's why that's at four meters now. So just helpful to know that you can always find your dimensions by pressing N, and you notice that this panel came out and it's attached to these tabs here. So this is the item transformation tab here. So if you were to, for example, accidentally default to the tool tab, you would just need to click back over to item and then you would see this information here. Okay, so we can find our object properties in the panel over here or in this little flyout menu. And we can also adjust those properties but then let's say that this is the exact shape and size and transformation that we want for this particular object. We think of it as being an object that always looks like this in the real world. And we want to really lock this in so that it's not that it was a two meter by two meter by two meter cube that is being scaled up twice and then rotated a couple of times. It's actually that this just is the default thing now. We want it to be that when we do a future transformation, a new rotation, a new scale, or a new movement, that it's respecting the fact that we want the object to remain looking like this. We can apply transformations. So let's take a look at what that is and then it'll make more sense as to why we would wanna do that. Press the control key on your keyboard and then press A while you're holding down the control key and you'll get the apply menu. And you'll see that you can apply the location. This is what you uh, adjust when you're using the move tool is the location of the object. Or you can apply the rotation. So you can say that the rotations that we've done so far, we can apply those or the scale. Or what we want to do is we want to apply all transformations. So go ahead and click on all transformations and notice what happened to everything in this menu here. It's no longer that it's one meter over in the X direction. It's no longer that it's rotated 45 degrees in the X and Y. And it's no longer that it's scaled up times two in the Z direction. Everything is zeroed back out with the scale being that everything is at a scale of one again. And the same would be true over here in the object properties panel. So why is this important? Well, it might be that this object always comes at this orientation. And now I think to myself, what would this look like if we rotated it 45 degrees? Well, you could come over to the X direction and type 45 and press enter. And now you've rotated it 45 degrees in the X direction. Remember, it's the X direction for this object, not the X direction for the entire world. We'll talk more about that in a future lesson. But the idea here now is rather than us having to do a bit of math, and say, well, the object is always gonna start out rotated 45 degrees, but then we wanna do an additional 45. Again, that's easy to do, right? We can add those two numbers together, but the point is you can make the changes to the object, the transformations to the object first. Then when you feel like this is the object, this is what I've designed, I wanna lock this in. And now any future transformations are, are something that you don't have to do math. You don't have to say, okay, we scaled it up times two, but now I want to show it. It would look like at 25% of that. So how do I do that? No, you just apply transformations and then you can come in and decide to change things later. And these are considered more of a temporary transformation, if you will. Right now it's temporarily rotated 45 degrees, but we can always bring that back to zero and see it in its regular or original format. Now I don't expect this to make a whole lot of sense. Why exactly do I need to apply transformations? 
And right now, when you're new to Blender, you don't necessarily need to do it. If you go through many of the future lessons and you never think about applying transformations, you should be fine. There will be cases, and I'll be sure to point them out, as you're learning Blender and you're getting more advanced, there'll be something down the line like we're going to talk about modifiers in a future lesson. And there may be modifiers that do something strange when you haven't applied your transformations first. If you ever run into something where you're doing something in Blender and it's not behaving the way you thought it would, it might just tie back to this whole idea of not having applied transformations before doing some next major step. But again, just important that you've been introduced to the idea right now. You don't need to know when to use it yet. I'll point out when you need to use it. And it'll just be one of those things you can go back and say, something's not working right here. I seem to remember this apply transformations thing. And you can always come back and relearn why and how to do it. Okay, now that you know about the object properties panel, as well as the fly out here where we get the dimensions, and we understand that we can make changes and also apply those changes, we now are ready to move on to the next lesson where we'll talk more about this orange dot that I've been pointing out. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.